Welcome back. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome day. Appreciate you guys coming back for another video. So we had a little good and bad situation with uh, Pop-Tart, the green anaconda. Nothing ridiculous and she's perfectly fine, but uh, just a little bit of some aggravation and uh, something that I did wrong and I definitely learned from it and won't do it again. But I'm also going to be feeding the male green anaconda, the new member uh, to the collection, but I just want to show you guys this male really fast. It is a leopard yellow belly clown and he just shed out and he's looking very nice. Really nice colors on him, great patterns down the sides, and I really like the, the belly on him, but I like, you know, I like how the oranges go into the blacks and just a phenomenal uh, looking ball python for those of you who do like them. And hopefully he can get up to size by the end of the year, going into next year, I do have two clown uh, females that could be ready. They're eight, 900 grams right now. So by the end of the year, they should hopefully be around 12 to 1500 grams. And uh, that should be okay for them. But he's eating uh, weaned, rat pups slash weans. So getting him up to 500 grams within the next uh, you know, six, seven months should be no problem at all. But let me put him back and then we'll talk about what happened. All right, well, I really have to step back for this lady. So this is Pop-Tart, the 2019 green anaconda. Some of you guys asked how old she was. So she is 2019 and she really sheds probably three to four times a year. But this year, well, now that she's getting bigger. I'm feeding her larger meal, meals naturally, so I think she's going to shed out quite a bit more uh, this year as she's hitting her growth spurt right now. But you can see how tame she is and how friendly she is. I do work with um, all of the snakes that I own a lot through the week. I've definitely put a lot more time into the anacondas, all three of them, and we'll check out some of the other ones before, or we'll check out Mountain Dew, and then we'll see Oliver, the new name, We'll talk about him in a little bit when we feed him. So what happened with her is she went into blue all last week. Normally, and this is just my experience with uh, the snakes, is when they go into blue, they come out of blue, and then they kind of look normal-ish. Like their color kind of comes back, and they look pretty normal. And then normally about three to four days after they come out of their blue phase, they shed. So I waited two days after she came out of her blue phase. The second night... I took out her water dish because I wanted a full shed and I, I sprayed everything down so I thought there would have been enough humidity in there. And I have her on paper, so I had her before, I had her on yard mulch, which is, works perfect. But every time she sheds, she'd go through the mulch and it would shred and rip up and then most of the time she would shed in the water and then it would get soaking wet and get ruined. And I really wanted a full shed from her, so I really thought she would be okay um, the way I was doing it. So I, you know, I come back today from work and there's huge explosion. I can show you the shed. I mean, there's pieces everywhere. There's stuck shed all over her. But the most important part is that she did get her eye caps off naturally. So there's no stuck eye caps on the shed and there's no stuck shed on her anymore. So I immediately put her in her water dish and then the shed just came off within five seconds. So my plan did not work out and I'm not going to be doing that again because I didn't know the humidity would have dropped so drastically in her cage because she's in an 8x3, which I guess now it makes sense that the humidity would be lost very rapidly in such a big cage with no gigantic water source because she normally has about 4 to 5 gallons of water in there. So a, a tough lesson, uh, a ruined shed, um, and in... And, but she's okay now, so she looks perfectly fine. She's growing a lot. I would definitely say she's almost six feet and she's definitely getting some weight on her, some thickness, and she's strong. She's very strong for her size and she's definitely, right now, as of now, the biggest snake in the collection. It was the Argentine, but I think this shed just pushed her uh, past the limit on, uh, on size. So very exciting. This year should be amazing for her and 
I just can't get over how gentle and how calm and how nice she is. So somebody, somebody did ask me, and I know I'm rambling on about this, but somebody asked me on Instagram, you know, what's it, what's the difference between like the attitudes between an anaconda and a Burmese? And this is just my experience out of the three that I have. I've never been hissed at. Um, they really don't show any threatening poses. They just will bite you. Like they'll just strike at you for no reason. They can be very, from what I'm told, they can be very unpredictable snakes. So I guess there's small ways that you can tell if they're going to strike, but it's not like the typical, I'm going to hiss, I'm going to puff my body up and I'm going to go like in an S pattern to try to bite you or warn you. They just will bite you. Um, and I have been bitten by Mountain Dew. Um, nothing serious. It was when she was a baby and nothing since then. And my Burmese, she will hiss and she will puff her body up and stuff like that, threatening that she will bite, but I've never been bitten by her. So big difference on uh, the anaconda body language with the Burmese. So be aware if you do own an anaconda, put your time into them and they will be perfectly fine. So let me put her back and then we'll check out uh, the other one and, um, and then we'll feed the other anaconda. So before we put her back and you'll notice the differences on coloration of the three anacondas, which is, which kind of blows my mind. So she's very green, very yellowy on the bottom and you can definitely see all of the black spots on her. She does have a really nice uh, orangey band behind her eyes that goes into the, the green. Uh, so be aware, and I'll, I'll mention that it's very different on how uh, the coloration can change on some of these snakes. Okay, so we'll look at the 2020 green anaconda. So there's Pop-Tart over there. Not too pleased that she is back in her cage. She would love to be out roaming around. Uh, but this is 2020 and she's a little bit small for her age. Um, possibly due for the fact that she almost died last year, but you know, gave her some medicine and everything worked out. So I'll try to tag that video if you guys are interested in what happened to her. But she has very, very bright orange bands behind her eyes, which is phenomenal. She looks extremely nice. I'm trying to put some weight on her because of you know the, the issues from last year. So I am feeding her a small rat, which is probably a perfect size for her weekly. Um, and everything looks like a typical green anaconda with her. So very green, not as green as Pop-Tart. We can definitely see all of the nice spots on her and her belly is very yellow as well. And she's extremely friendly, even though she did bite me the first day I met her, but that was my fault. So um, can't, can't fault her for that. So I'll just let her hang out and do what she wants to do for a little bit. I just get a little bit nervous when she gets around this oil heater because it is hot and we don't need her to get burned. So I'll keep my eye on her for a little bit. And this is the shed from Pop-Tart and there's still a bunch of left in her cage, unfortunately. So yeah, I was so excited to get a full shed. I thought I was, I thought I would have got one from my, my stupidity <laughs> and then this is what happened. But she's okay, Everything, everything's worked out. So this is Oliver. I know I was saying that I was gonna do a poll, but I had so many random people. Um, just message me and say Oliver would be a great name. I don't know how I, so many people thought of Oliver, but I was like, well, if this many people are asking for Oliver, then we're just gonna pick Oliver for the name. So this is the name that he has. And it's crazy on how dark he is. So you can see the green, very, very dark green, kind of see the spots. He really does have some really nice spots on him. And I'm still working with him. He's been, he's been pretty good. I have not been bit or struck at, but you can see his, the eye bands. There's no yellow, there's no orange. I guess there's a little bit of orange, but it's just crazy on how dark he is, which is awesome. So I don't know if he's gonna lighten up. Um, the other two anacondas were, when they were babies, they were very, very green. And we'll just see what happens if he gets very dark. I've seen extremely dark females. Um, 
that were like 10 plus years old and they almost look black like you can barely see the spots on them and i really like that but i also like the really bright green because it's the signature uh anaconda look but we'll we'll see what happens and this will be my second feeding with him he is in this small little cage so we will you know i like to keep i like to keep the baby snakes on uh, paper towels it just makes things easier if there's a problem and she does have a very large, so I did have some mulch in here with it. It didn't really work out, but, um, you know, she has her water, so she's healthy. She, she's a big, or I'm sorry, he. I have so many female snakes that I accidentally call the, the males females. <laughs> but if you guys don't want to see a live, then uh, I would probably not watch this right now. So it's it's it blows my mind that he's, you know, three, four months old off of off of rats so he can be a little testy um so we can definitely see the colorations on him now but i do need to get him used to um interacting with him and getting him not not defensive about touching him on on his head because that's one of the major things um that i've kind of noticed with him is that he likes to strike when uh something's like around his face I need to get gloves on and I really need to to work with him on that to get him better but I do I mean you can see I can I, I touched him and I can actually take him out without using a hook which is really nice but for him to be on rats at this young of an age it's amazing it kind of is shocking because it took a year and a half for Mountain Dew and it took like eight months for Pop-Tart so 